And good morning. Hello. Yeah. Good morning po sa ating lahat. Uh, ang iskay ng church. And good morning din sa mga nanonood dyan sa, uh, sa mga gadgets nyo or sa TV, uh, smart TV. And um, lakas nyo lang yung, ano, yung volume ng yung mga uh, nung pinapanood nyo para marinig naman ng mga nasa loob ng, kasama nyo sa loob ng bahay. Okay, um, before we start, uh, let us pray. Panginoong Diyos, salamat po muli sa umagang ito na pinagkalog niyo sa amin. Salamat po sa bagong umaga, sa bagong pag-asa, sa bagong biyaya at sa awa na binibigay niyo sa amin, Panginoon. At sa aming pag-aaral ngayong umagang ito, Panginoon, na way, kayo po ay um, uh, gabayan niyo po kami at um, uh, buksan ang aming isipan, ang aming puso, Panginoon, sa kung ano man yung gusto niyong uh, sabihin o uh, i I lesson sa amin ngayong umagang ito, Panginoon. Maraming salamat po muli sa pangalan ng yung anak na si Jesus. Amen. Okay, turn our Bibles to uh, the book of Judges. Book of Judges. Isa sa maaksyon at madugong uh, book sa Bible with full of um practical applications na magagamit natin today bilang isang Kristiyano. Judges chapter 6, uh, marahil sa mga lumaki sa Sunday School, uh, familiar na kayo sa kwentong ito about Gideon and his 300 men. So, sila, sila muna bago yung 300 na Spartans uh, na, na remember the battle sa Thermopylae. Um, pero may kasama sila kasing iba doon. Kaya hindi lang sila 300. May ibang Greek soldiers doon. In the end, they all died. Pero ang kagandaan nila sa group ni Gideon is hindi sila namatay. At the same time, napagtagumpayan nila yung battle nila. And they won against a hundred, hundreds of thousands of enemies. And that is God's doing, syempre. Judges chapter 6, verse 1. Uh, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. So Israel sinned against God in verse 1. So previous chapter, mababasa natin sa uh, chapter 5 verse 31, that the land had rest for 40 years. And yet, pagbungad pa lang ng chapter 6, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. They plunged into sin over and over again. So Israel stuck in this kind of cycle. So peace in the land. Uh, peace in the land. Uh, Israel does evil. God punishes. Uh, Israel cries out. And then God raises a judge. And then Israel is delivered. And then peace ulit. And then, ulit na naman ulit sa ganon. Um, okay. So, ulit na naman sa ganon. Israel does evil and so on and so on. Or, uh, pinag-uusapan natin dito is within the span of 400, uh, approximately 400 years sa book ng Judges, na paulit-ulit na lang na nagkakasala sila. And if we have the rights to make a comment about their attitude, Kung may karapatan lang tayong uh, sabihin sa kanila, okay, uh, ang kulit naman itong mga taong to, di ba? Kung uso lang yung social media, binash na natin sila. Ang kukulit, ang kukulit, hindi na nadadala at walang kadaladala. As in, magigigil ka, makaka-face maka palm. But we, we don't have the rights to say kasi um, tayo din mismo na anak ng Diyos, is makukulit din tayo. We sin against God. Okay, self-assessment muna tayo. Kailan kahuling nagkasala sa Diyos? Yung, yung obvious. Okay, na alam mong kasalanan pala yung ginagawa mo, pero gina- tinotolerate mo pa rin. Ginagawa mo pa rin. Okay, last month? Last week? Yesterday? Okay? So, minsan may binabalikan tayong maliit na sin. 
Diba? Wala namang nakakapansin. Maliit lang naman, Lord, eh. Diba? So, but it's still, it's a sin. And, but because our God is long-suffering God, slow to anger, and because of His grace and mercy, the Lord disciplines His children. Kung mananampalataya ka, na, uh, mananampalataya ka sa Panginoon, He disciplines, He chastises His children. Hebrews 12, verse 6, ang sabi niya, For whom the Lord loveth, He chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom He received. As a loving father, He disciplined His children. At, at ganun yung ginawa ng Panginoon, ginagawa ng Panginoon sa atin. So, madalas tayo in mismo kasi yung gumagawa ng, uh, ng ikapapahamak natin. And uh, ganyan yung ginawa ng mga Israelites because they did evil things in the sight of the Lord. Anong ginawa niya? The Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years because they cried out sa Panginoon. The Lord uh, chastened or disciplined them by delivering them into the hand of Midianites. Israel was suppressed. Nakalagay doon sa verse 1, And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. So unang nag sa kanila, or dito sa, sa context natin, sa text natin, is yung mga Midianites. For seven years, they are in the grasp of Midians or Midianites. And they dominate them. And who are uh, who were these Midianites, by the way? They are the descendants of Abraham. Most of us knows Abraham's sons, di ba? So, um, si Isaac with, uh, with Sarah, okay? the promised child, and Ishmael with Hagar. So, pagdating sa Genesis 23, uh, chapter 23, verse 1, Sarah, uh, on the side note, the only woman in the Bible, na nilagay yung yung age, yung death and yung uh, yung pagkamatay niya na na-mention. Then nag-asawa kasi ulit si Abraham. Ang pangalan ng asawa niya ay si Ketura in Genesis chapter 25. And Abraham have six sons kay Ketura. And one of his sons named Midian, kung saan nang galing yung mga Midianites. So therefore magkakamag-anak sila ng mga Israelites. Abraham sent his sons away, itong mga Midianites na to, uh, sa, dun sa land na yon, eastward, and he gave them presents and sent them away because kay Isaac nga lang kasi yung lugar na yon. At ayaw niyang may kahati si Isaac sa lupain. He is the son of promise in which the covenant of God given to. And then, uh, fast forward, Moses in his early years, fled to Midian. And naging father-in-law niya si Jethro, which, which is priest siya ng Midianites, ng Midian. But eventually, these Midianites became enemy of Israelites in the eastward. And this passage, God used this group of people as a disciplining instrument to his people so that they go back again to him. Verse 2, And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens, which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. These Midianites became powerful enough to oppress the Israelites. And every time that there is an attack, nagtatago sila. Tatago sila sa mga bundok, sa mga kweba, or gumagawa sila ng tataguan nila. Um, they are looking for uh, other safe places of refuge in times of invasions. Hindi sila makalaban or ma ma mga folks na living there sa tents, mga nomads, putting down and putting up their tents, huge tents, made of goat or camel, camel's hair. And they move with their cattle and camels. Kung baga, wala silang sariling 
occupation, uh, occupation. Wala sila sariling uh, land. Okay? And they move with their cattle, their camels, and others, uh, and other uh, kanilang pinakakitaan or kinabubuhay. And nalala ko sa isang subject, kahapon naghahanap ako ng picture kasi wala. Nalala ko sa isang subject namin kay uh, Pastor Mike Panyala. Uh, we have this activity to make, uh, to, ma uh, to make, or at least imitate the Bedouin's tents. So we borrowed pumot sa mga dormitorians kasi um, wala namang kaming goat or camels here to, to weave. And so far, okay naman. Uh, maliit nga lang yung space na, na imitate naman namin yung tent. Ayan. So ewan ko lang kung sa original tent kasi may amoy camel siya. <laughs> so amoy camel yung ginawa namin tent. Kaya, um, so yung mga scholars... Nayon, they believe that these are the descendants of Esau. In verse 4, And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left to sustain, uh, sustenance uh, for Israel. Neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. The Midianites, along with the Amalekites, and other eastern uh, groups or tribes would wait until the Israelites came up and harvested. And then uh, they sweep into the area at kinukuha nila yung, yung, mga, yung mga crops nila. Okay? Yung pinagpaguran nila. Kung baga Israelites yung nagtanim sila, yung kakain. Okay? It's, and it's very terrible thing kasi harap-harapan silang ninanakawan. At wala silang magawa tungkol dito, uh, uh, ukol dito sa mga groups na to. And in verse 5, For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. Ganun sila kadami. For both they and their camels were without number, and they entered into the land to destroy, uh, to destroy it. This group of people, uh, this group of people were too many for Israel. And the Midianites had a new weapon called camels. So these animals were used for warfare. Last week, uh, napag-alaman natin na si, si Sarah is meron siyang chariots of iron. Katumbas yan yung tanke ngayon. Okay? Yung mga Israelites, wala silang ganitong gamit. And they are not entered yet sa Iron Age. I think sa panahon pa ni Saul, ni King Saul, yung, yung nagkaroon sila ng mga ganitong gamit. And it is intimidating sa mga Israelites kasi may, may gamit sila. On the other hand, Midianites and some Eastern tribes have camels as their weapons. Or camelry, ang tawag nila dito, or camel cavalry. Uh, for war. So aside from being big and bulky yung camel, they are good as a horse. It can move quickly for 40 to 60 km per hour at sprint type lang yon, parang mabilisan lang. And Midianites were good in guerrilla warfare. Ito yung hit and run, ito yung ambush, okay? yung lightning strikes, atake, takbo. So they sweep in and kaya nahihirapan yung Israelites kasi mabibilis yung mga yung ganitong classing warfare or yung strategy and Midianites utilize it effectively and successfully and then ano pa Israel cried out unto the Lord in verse 6 to 12 and Israel was greatly impoverished, naghihirap na sila, because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. After so many years, seven long years of being oppressed, intimidated and dominated by this uh, Midianites, they finally cried out unto the Lord. Seven years. Matagal-tagal din yan. Pero, uh, bilang isang Kristiyano, 
gaano ba katagal bago tayo humingi ng tulong sa Panginoon? Ang tao madalas kahit hirap na hirap na, hindi, okay lang, kaya pa. Pero dahil sa pride, di ba, napoprolong yung pagdurusa natin. Nagiging last option na lang yung paghingi natin ng tulong sa Panginoon. Ikaw na wala ka pa, na wala pang relasyon uh, sa, sa Panginoon, kailan ka kaya tatawag sa Panginoon? Kailan ka kaya hihingi ng tulong? Diba? I am, Lord, I am lost. I've sinned against you. Save me. Si Jesus Cristo lang ang tanging tagapagligtas o ang magliligtas sa iyo. At tawag sinagot ng Diyos sa kanila, sa Israelites, God responded and reminded them. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. Verse 9, And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you, and drave them out from before you, and gave you the land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. <clears throat> Fear not the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Kung mapapansin natin, God is gracious and good. He did not abandon His children. He reminded them that he is their God. I am the God that brought you out of Egypt. Inalis ko kayo sa pagkakaalipin doon at sa mga nagpapahirap sa inyo along the way sa wilderness. Ngayon pa ba, napababayaan ko kayo? Kumbaga, pinaalala niya sa Israelites and also pinarealize niya sa mga Israelites kung bakit ganun yung condition nila. Malamang, they cried out unto the Lord kasi sobrang nahihirapan sila. Pero deep within them, wala talaga yung pagsisisi nila. Wala na talaga silang option to um, na mahingian ng tulong. Kaya pinaalala sa kanila, pinarealize sa kanila na alam nyo ba kung ba't kayo nagkakaganyan? Because you did not obey my voice. God brings them into awareness of sin. Israel cried out to God and God in His mercy he gave deliver a judge for Israel in verse 11 God chose Gideon as uh, as deliver <clears throat> verse 11 and there came up or came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah that pertained to Joash the Abiz uh, Abizrite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. So Gideon is there threshing his, uh, threshing his wheat for food uh, by the winepress. And sa winepress, kasi parang, ano siya, parang valley yung itsura nung, yung, ano, yung, yung place na yun. And may mga harang yun. And usually, threshing a wheat done in high places or sa mahangin na lugar, sa open places, para yung shaft, humi, humiwalay siya, parang, parang sa palay. ba pag, pag nagtatahip, ano yan, nagtatahip, nagtatahip, uh, kailangan na sa open area. So obviously, Gideon is hiding from the oppressors. Kasi mahirap na pag nakita siya, di ba? It's possible mamatay siya or magutom siya. Walang option doon. Eh, um, wala siyang kakainin doon. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in this place. And, and this is one of the many appearances in the Old Testament in God 
uh, I mean, appearances of God in human flesh. And it is also considered as a foreshadowing of the pre-incarnate Christ or the Emmanuel. God is with us. Then in verse 12, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, uh, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Surprisingly, this angel of the Lord that appeared to Gideon, um, Gideon, malamang, he's an ordinary man, an ordinary uh, person, um, isang resident lang to sa Israel. And then unexpectedly, binati siya nitong nagpakita sa kanya. Thou mighty man of valor. And that will be on next week. Therefore, ano yung pwede nating um, makuha dito? God hears us and keeps His promises. God reminded them of how faithful God is sa kanila. From the land of Egypt to the land of promise. However, makulit talaga ang mga Israelites. Even in their time of prosperity and peace, they had neglected him and courted, instead courted his rivals. They turned their back to him and worshipped other gods and never sought the true and living God. But every time na nararamdaman na nila yung extreme hardship, they cried out to the Lord. Kung maalala natin yung mga previous lessons natin, the land was already given to them. Tapos na, ibibigay, ibinigay na sa kanila. Ang gagawin na lang nila is to claim that land, is to take action on it. That land is promised, promised pa nga yan eh, during um, way back sa time ni Abraham. And we can say that God keeps His promises. As a believer, yun yung pinanghahawakan natin through storms of our life, hardships and trials. He always keeps His promises. Ano ba? God hears us and never abandoned His people. God in His rich grace and mercy, He never abandoned His people, the Israelites. Yes, they were disciplined because they were people of God and they sinned against Him. But He never abandoned them. Mas mahirap, um, mas okay nang madisiplina ka kaysa iwanan ka or kalimutan ka na lang. Kahit sila ay paulit-ulit dun sa cycle of, serve, uh, um, of serving Him and then uh, turning back sa Kanya. So, sinning against Him. Ayan. So, pinatunayan ng Diyos sa kanila yan. Sa mga nakaraang lesson natin dito sa Book of Judges. Sa buhay kaya natin, bilang isang Kristiyano, naisip ba natin minsan kung nakapagpasalamat ba tayo na, na dahil tapat, tapat ang Diyos sa atin? Nakapagpasalamat ba tayo sa mga ginagawa niya sa ating buhay? Di ba mas okay kung uh, dahil tapat ang Diyos, di ba? Hindi, nagba, hindi rin nagbabago ang Diyos sa atin? Hindi nagbabago ang isip ng Diyos? Kasi kung nagbabago ang isip niya sa mga promises pa lang niya, malabong usapan na yun. Ah, nagbago na yung isip ko eh. Iba na lang yung promise ko. Lalo na dun sa salvation. He can choose different nation or start all over again. Bala ka dyan. He is silent. But when the Israelites cried out his people to him, he heard them. And as an individual, we can call unto him he will hear us kahit ano pa yung pinagdaadaanan mo ngayon. Because God keeps His promises and He will never abandon you. 
God hears us and ready to give forgiveness. Actually, yung gravity ng sin ng mga Israelites is talagang hindi katanggap-tanggap, logically speaking. Um, they don't deserve to be delivered. Kung baka parang nagtitake advantage na lang sila. At sa paulit-ulit na lang, they keep on doing what is evil in the sight of the Lord. It means disobedience. Mas sinusunod nila yung kagustuhan nila, yung, yung gusto ng katawan nila, yung gusto ng, ng will nila. God charges them rebellion to Israelites. But when they cried out to Him, dahil nahihirapan sila, pinarealize sa kanila that they sinned against Him. Parang isang magulang na pinalo mo. Bakit kita pinalo? Then, paparealize mo dun sa bata kung ano yung kasalanan niya. Like Israelites, we don't deserve to be delivered. We don't deserve to be saved. Deserve natin yung galit, yung wrath ng Panginoon. Because we disobeyed Him. Wala tayong relasyon sa Panginoon. But God's forgiveness is given to us nung nanampalataya tayo kay Jesus. At sa pamamagitan ni Jesus Kristo, yung galit na yun, the punishment that we deserve is sinalo ni Jesus Christ sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Sinalo niya yun para sa atin yung galit na yun, yung punishment na yun. Kaya ikaw at ako bilang isang mananampalataya ay napatawad. At kung, uh, at kung isa kang mananampalataya din, um, hindi naman in-expect ng Panginoon to be perfect. Maging perfect yung, yung Christian life natin. Meron at meron times na um, madadapa ka talaga. Magkakasala ka. Pero nandoon yung Totoong pagsisisi dapat. Yung totoong pagbabago. Ilapit mo sa Panginoon yan. At handa siyang magpatawad sa iyo. He is swift to show mercy and how inclined to hear our prayers. So that sinners may be encouraged to return and repent to Him. Panalangin tayo. Panginoong Diyos, salamat po sa pagbibigay niyo sa amin ng uh, ng salvation, Panginoon. Salamat po sa aming natutunan ngayong umagang ito. Panginoon, um, kung meron man kaming nagawang kasalanan, Panginoon, patawarin niyo po kami. Tulungan niyo po kaming magbago. Tulungan niyo po kaming um, lumago sa aming pananampalataya sa inyo, Panginoon. At gawin niyo po kaming instrument of your blessing, instrument of, 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 of your salvation, Panginoon, your channel of your salvation, Panginoon. At ma-share namin sa iba yung na-receive namin kapatawaran. Panginoon, as we continue to, to have this program sa umagang ito, be with us, Lord. At ingatan niyo po ang aming mga uh, kapatiran, ang mga kasamahan po namin, Panginoon, napupunta dito, ingatan niyo po sila at naway mabless po ang bawat isa sa amin, lalo na po yung mga nasa, uh, nasa online, Panginoon. Maraming salamat po muli sa pangalan ng iyong anak na sa Yesus. Amen.